The Xiaomi 13 Ultra is the phone that thinks it's a DSLR camera. Seriously, it's so ludicrously specked out that I'm surprised it doesn't come with a tripod and a lens hood. But can it beat the iPhone, the most popular flagship phone on the planet? Let's see if this camera phone can outdo the selfie machine. When it comes to unboxing, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra wins a point. Not because it's extraordinary, but because it's like a kid who finally remembered to bring everything to school. You get an insert from on to off, a couple of manuals, a hard case that's shaped like a puzzle piece, a 90-watt charger that's surprisingly compact, a USB cable, and of course the star of the show, the 13 Ultra itself. Meanwhile, the iPhone packaging is like that one friend who never brings anything to the party. No charger, no case, and no excitement, it's not even a competition. So, let's see if this phone can snap its way to the top, or if the iPhone will continue to reign as the king of the smartphone world. My name is Isabella from Hey G Pal, nice to have you here, and please if you find this honest review helpful, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons it helps with the YouTube algorithm, thank you, and let's get into it. You get an insert from on to off, which has the SIM ejector, a couple of manuals, and a hard case, which is kind of a weird shape, and then right at the very bottom, a 90-watt charger, which is surprisingly compact for what's still quite a high wattage, the USB cable, and then, of course, the 13 Ultra itself. The iPhone packaging, as you know, is nice. It's satisfying but basic. There's no charger here and definitely no case. It's not even really a competition, and honestly, the differences only get bigger when you start looking at the design of these phones. The iPhone is much less polarizing. It kind of has to be if Apple wants this to be the phone that 30 million people are going to buy. They've got no room to be edgy with any of the style choices. They've got to keep it simple, clean, and elegant, and this does that. I think this company knows full well that they won't be selling 30 million units of these. They're going to sell 2 or maybe 3 million. And those 3 million are going to be pro users who are actively seeking something that feels unique. And this achieves that goal. I wouldn't say it's the neatest, prettiest phone. It's got a speed bump halfway up the back of it. Besides, the phone blends into the rear, which is again just a bit weird, and it kind of makes this strip going up the back look like a carpet that's not fitted properly. The phone rattles quite a bit thanks to lots of large camera lenses moving around, and the screen borders are still Xiaomi, not completely all the way around, which at this point is just bordering on painful, but technically, it's really impressive. The only reason that you can even see the sides blending into the back is that the sides and the back are all one continuous piece here, which you know I've had a pretty good play at trying to bend or creak or crack and unnothing by using a unibody design like this. They've massively reduced the number of points of vulnerability around the phone. It reminds me of how reassuring the unibody MacBook feels is like how resistant it is to any kind of flexing compared to a lot of these even technically more expensive laptops that just are made of more parts. Well, that did not sound good, and then this a rug on top especially treated silicon, which is made for grip, is completely resistant to smudges and fingerprints made to be anti-yellowing, which is not a given for silicone finishes. And even inhibits the growth of 99 of bacteria plus, I know I bang on about this, but having your camera in the middle of your phone's body is just helpful because it means that when you put it on a table, it's quite usable without wobbling. So effectively, I think the iPhone is a little more form-fitting. I think the Xiaomi is a little more functional, both of which matter, but I just think it's up to you in this case. On which one matters more, but then you notice something on the Xiaomi that is just undeniably peak smartphone the screen, because putting aside for a minute my nitpicky gripes about the bottom chin being thicker, or the top corner looking a little bit off just because of the way the screen slopes around the edges, the panel itself is dazzling. You might have heard of a few phones in the last few years cropping up with 1500 nit peak brightness levels, the iPhone's actually well regarded for going even beyond that at 2000 nits, and now this pushes that to 2600. That's so high that it's a difference you don't even notice in most scenarios, but it means that should you be in direct sunlight, this phone is not just visible from all angles, but actually bright from all angles, plus the fact that it is slightly curved at the sides is I think a perk too. It feels a little bit rough when you have the pre-installed screen protector on, because your thumb is effectively grazing over the edge of it, but as long as you possess the risk appetite to take it off, it makes gestures feel way more fluid than they do on the sharp edges of the iPhone, and the crown jewel is that while both phones have super fast 120 Hertz refresh rates, the Xiaomi's using more up-to-date refresh rate tech that can scale the refresh rate up and down faster and more battery efficient than the iPhone. Can it be the higher resolution screen? But I just hesitate to call that a benefit because it's one of those strange situations where they're giving you the option to use the screen in super high res mode, but then subtly telling you that they don't actually recommend it for the majority of users for battery reasons, because by default, the phone runs at 1080p, which is lower than the resolution on the iPhone. 
Okay, so given that Xiaomi takes this super energy saving ideology, and the fact that you've got this super energy efficient panel, how good is the 13 Ultra's battery? So I've got a new version of both phones, I've charged them up to 100 well unplug, and it'll spare you the pain of actually having to watch smartphones die one percentage point at a time. Let's just fast forward to the moment where the Xiaomi calls it quits, because sure enough, yes, even though it has a 5000 milliamp hour battery, which is quite significantly bigger than Apple's 43001, even with the low resolution and the more advanced screen technology, it is still the first one to go. It ends up with 10 hours and 8 minutes in this particular run, and the iPhone only very marginally longer at 10 hours 18 as for where that puts these phones in real world usage i am using a 14 pro max every single day since launch and i would say it's one of those phones with good battery life but not so good that you can just completely forget about it and xiaomi sits in that same ballpark but what makes me slightly prefer it is the new hibernation mode see plot twist the xiaomi is not actually dead it's programmed to hibernate when it hits one percentage point of battery it closes all apps it disables almost everything to give you one more solid hour of still being reachable so overall well call battery a draw but that's a cool feature can we just have every phone do that from now on and if you're curious how long each one then takes to charge it up well i plugged both back in i went down to make myself an iced tea and by the time i was back which was probably four minutes later Xiaomi was already at 15, it's not hugely surprising. I mean 90 watt charging is significantly more powerful than Apple's 27 watts, but it is kind of interesting that even though this is Xiaomi's highest end smartphone ever, it's far from their fastest charging phone. You can get Xiaomi phones with over 200 watts of charging power nowadays that charge in like 9 minutes, but they probably decided to keep the charging a little bit more typical, which is not to say slow, because it will still be fully charged in 45 minutes, while the iPhone takes an eternity to reach 66%, because super fast charging comes with its own set of trade-offs, like typically having a smaller battery capacity, and because their marketing for this one is almost certainly going to focus on the cameras. Although we are not there yet, Xiaomi is far ahead of Apple. I think it would be hilarious if my small team of seven individuals could surpass the leading tech firm on the entire platform, and hey, if we succeed, I will personally create the biggest and most potent iPhone on the planet. So a sub to the channel would be me, Teoric. So that's five points to two points right now, but what about the audio quality? I have a very exciting new microphone that we are going to test this with, so for a moment, try to imagine that these are your ears. This is what the iPhone sounds like, it's a very clean sound with a little kicker bass but it's not one of those phones at the same time that defies its dimensions in audio or anything, so now let's switch over to the Xiaomi, and this phone does something a little differently, instead of one downward firing speaker, and then the earpiece on the front doubling as the second, this has one bottom firing, and then one top firing, and I like the fact that Xiaomi gives you a more symmetrical sound, but to be honest for me, the fact that Apple earpiece fires directly towards you makes the vocals feel more direct, and it's also a little bit louder, so it'll go with the iPhone here. The software is subjective, of course, but I will say one thing Xiaomi is not shying away from being inspired by Apple. You know it's similar when you're finding that the muscle memory that you've developed with your iPhone still works to control this phone. Now that doesn't make it bad. I mean, on the contrary, this new Mini 14 can let you open up more apps at once. Although who uses more than two on a phone as a wider selection of more colorful widgets? I'm finding it better organized in terms of finding what you need from the settings, plus this is the smoothest a Xiaomi phone has ever been in my eyes, and just before we get to the cameras, this is something that we do need to test how fast is it. A few weeks ago, I compared the speed of the iPhone to a super top gaming Android which had an external cooler attached to it, but arguably the even more interesting question is how does a more traditional Android flagship, one that's more focused on photography, stack up to Apple in performance? So I've run a whole suite of benchmarks, and the results are pretty clear that Apple is far ahead when it comes to the CPU performance anywhere from 15 to 25, depending on how you measure it. But Xiaomi leads when it comes to the graphics, and just to see how well each phone handles temperature, because Xiaomi does go on about how this phone has the first aerospace grade toroidal vapor liquid separated powered cooling system called the marketing. These days kill me now I ran an extreme stress test for 20 minutes straight, and actually yeah you'll notice that Xiaomi not just starts at a higher score because its graphics are better, but also that this score falls slower throughout the test, it has a higher stability of 808%, as opposed to 658 which means that whatever gobbledygook they've called this internal cooling system, it does work when you push both phones to their limits. This does feel hotter on the outside, but that's because the cooling system is doing a better job of getting heat out on the inside, and internal heat is generally where more problems occur, which makes overall performance about a draw depending on what specifically you're trying to do on your phone. Time to see what this phone was made for cameras because, I mean, you don't have to look at the specs for long to see that on paper. 
Xiaomi murders the iPhone with a 32-megapixel selfie camera. 450 megapixel cameras on the rear. Yes, four, with all four having high-end sensors and the main camera having the largest sensor currently available on a phone. This is why the crowd erupted when the price of this phone was announced. We've never seen a phone camera like this. But before we get to the rear cameras, which, to be honest, actually do deliver on that hype, we need to talk about the front camera because it does not. It just looks so washed out. I look a bit like a ghost, and it's a far cry from what phones like the Google Pixel have done with their super deep natural skin tones. While this is somewhat rescued by the powerful image processing while you're snapping photographs, the video is really pretty rubbish. I mean, gander at this room here. It simply has a white look in addition to being restricted to 1080p, which I just don't comprehend. If there's anybody that's showing me this video, kindly explain to me why this telephone, your 2023 Zenith Leader Ultra, can't record 4K on its front camera. It's anything but a technical limit. Telephones have had the option to do this throughout recent years. Definitely, it's anything but an expense concern. They've kitted out every other camera on the telephone to 8K, and it can't have anything to do with the size of the cameras either, because Samsung does 4K fine and dandy with one that occupies less room. The main thing I can believe is that perhaps individuals feel like 4K could overrepresent skin blemishes. Yet truly, the way that your skin looks is considerably more down to the product handling than it is the goal. You can have a sharp film that additionally does right by you, like the Samsung that I'm recording this on. It could appear to be a little finicky, yet it truly comes at a time when everybody is making content utilizing their cell phones, particularly this front-facing camera. I don't think it's this front camera that has presumably been the single thing that has prevented me from escaping from the iPhone because I've been extremely enticed, and to comprehend the reason why I've been so enticed, let's discuss the back cameras. The most effective way to feature exactly the way in which extraordinary these back cameras are isn't to tie you with a whirlwind of many shots taken from it. I mean, each LED from the most recent five years has had the option to take photographs like this. It's showing you the way that simple it makes it to do that. The key thing that I would agree that Xiaomi has recently dominated with this telephone is the negligence. Everything about the way this camera framework works, the way that every focal point is really excellent. Thus, you can zoom in and completely out without stress over debasement. The way that centering is top of the line, so you don't need to stay there screwing with it, or in any event, tapping your screen to select your subject the way that tones are truly satisfying, I wonder whether or not to say that the varieties are precise on the grounds that, to tell the truth, if you're going for crude exactness, I actually figure the iPhone improves. However, for me, by and by, what the Xiaomi shows improvement over is that I believe on the off chance that you point blank ask somebody, would you rather your photographs are genuine or not? By far, most individuals would agree that I need authenticity. We don't like the possibility that pictures at times matching the dependability of the more useful device. iPhone camera. Presently, it truly does likewise have a variable opening on its fundamental camera, which permits it to switch between a wide F19 and a tight F40. Yet I simply believe it's sort of stupid for this telephone. When it's all said and done, the three fundamental difficulties that we went through the whole last 10 years attempting to defeat with cell phone cameras were getting all the more light into these more modest sensors, shooting shots quicker, and making more foundation obscure to copy the realistic style of expert cameras. Changing your aperture to f40 turns down your light, making each shot increasingly slow and the foundation obscure. Well, there are several super special circumstances where you could need this, such as lengthy openness photography, but come on when your front camera seems to be this, fix that first. Anyway, whereas I was even more impressed by this phone's night mode, let's be very clear. The iPhone is good at night, but the Xiaomi 13 Ultra feels like it's not kind of close and could go either way, genuinely like there is no competition. This is a photo from both phones' main cameras. You can see so many little parts where the 13 Ultra is just picking up a little bit more information or is a little bit sharper. But where you notice the difference even more is flicking to the ultra-wide cameras. Kashami is wider while also being more detailed. I was expecting Xiaomi to also steamroll when it came to the zoom shots, since Apple's zoom camera is just not equipped for the dark, so it uses its main camera and just digital zooms in. That is to say, insofar as there are lights around, Xiaomi will in general win. However, when you go to those very dull situations, Apple's man-made reasoning calculation appears to simply crawl out ahead a smidgen, and Xiaomi blows a gasket, yet the video dazzled me. I wouldn't venture to say that this has preferred video over the iPhone, yet all the same, it's not more terrible. 
the sharpness, the solidness, and the powerful reach. This feels like a major comment. However, for all the time that I've utilized this, it hasn't felt like a compromised video experience, which is something or other that I've recently generally expected while utilizing an Android telephone. It's still somewhat grainier in really low light. However, at that point, you can film 8K video at multiple times amplification. No doubt it's just 24 FPS so it's nervous or true to life, yet that is not typical on a telephone, so Xiaomi wins in additional classifications than the iPhone. It doesn't by and large mean it's a superior telephone to everybody. As to me, the front camera is especially significant, and I can't work with this, but it is enough for me to say that assuming you like the sound of it, I can undoubtedly suggest it when it dispatches in your country. Okay, this will be cool. In reality, take a stab at recording this on the zoom camera of the telephone. So as of late, I've gone down somewhat of a dark hole about getting my records. I've been perceiving how even YouTubers who followed every one of the prescribed advances figured out how to get hacked. It's alarming, and it's caused me to understand that there are whole gatherings out there on the dull web whose whole intention is only for individuals to trade client information, your addresses, your passwords, and at times they don't even need your passwords. A programmer can simply email you a connection, and if you click on that connection, they can download a document that gives them admittance to your meeting ID which successfully implies they can begin perusing the web as though they were you. Not a single tick arrangement immediately tackles all web security issues, yet it makes it much harder for troublemakers like this to meddle with you. It acts essentially as a broker to accept your web traffic and scramble it to keep you mysterious to whoever's facilitating the organization. In addition, it comes with a legitimate antivirus, a confidential free web search, and a surf shark that will inform you as to whether your information has been compromised. I've been perceiving how even YouTubers who followed every one of the prescribed advances figured out how to get hacked. It's alarming, and it's caused me to understand that there are whole gatherings out there on the dull web whose whole intention is only for individuals to trade client information, your addresses, your passwords, and at times they don't even need your passwords. A programmer can simply email you a connection, and if you click on that connection, they can download a document that gives them admittance to your meeting ID which successfully implies they can begin perusing the web as though they were you. Not a single tick arrangement immediately tackles all web security issues, yet it makes it much harder for troublemakers like this to meddle with you. It acts essentially as a broker to accept your web traffic and scramble it to keep you mysterious to whoever's facilitating the organization. In addition, it comes with a legitimate antivirus, a confidential free web search, and a surf shark that will inform you as to whether your information has been compromised.